Hi artists and welcome to today's video. Little parentheses, you can skip the intro and go straight to the tutorial, I'll be seeing you there. So like the title says, today I'll be showing you how to bake your high resolution sculpt to your low resolution character. So I'll be showing you everything from exporting your low resolution met with the material setups as well as the right name in convention to exporting your high resolution mesh from ZBrush and finally the settings in Substance Painter. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the video. Before exporting your low resolution character, you first have to make sure the name in convention is correct because in Substance Painter that will turn out to be very important. More on that later. So, on the outliner in Maya, you can see all of the objects in your scene, including your meshes and their names. If your outliner is not present in your viewport, simply go to Windows and select Outliner. Alright, so the right naming convention should be as followed. The name of your object, so for instance for me here it's head, then underscore low. In my case, the L of low is in majuscule, so I just need to make sure that every single one of my mesh follows that logic. Mine is already well named, but for the sake of this tutorial, let me show you ways of changing the nickname quickly. If you don't have the suffix well named, you can double click on the mesh in the outliner to add a suffix. Another way to change multiple objects' names at once is to go to Modify, then select Search and Replace option. Put a dollar sign in Search, what that means is empty space, and then put in Replace underscore low. That will instantly add underscore low to every single object you have selected in your outliner if in the Search and Replace option you have selected selection. Once that has been verified, the next steps we're going to take is correctly assign the materials and the UVs. So as you can see in my viewport, I have assigned different ID colors to different parts of my character. To do that, simply select all of the pieces you want to have in the same material ID, then click on your right mouse button and go down to select adding new material. Then go to Maya and select Lambert. With the new material selected, you can choose its color and rename it. Try to create your IDs depending on what your shader will be. What I mean is I will put everything that is supposed to be fabric together, leather together, and if in your case you have metal, put it all together. That will make your life way easier when working in your shader in a different software. Now, if I go and click on this little sphere up here, which is the hyper shade, as you can see, we can see all of our materials that are present in our scene. Except there are a few which I do not use, so I'm going on Edit and click on Delete on Used Notes, which is going to delete every material that isn't being used in my scene. Also, try and find the middle ground between having too many objects and not enough in one material ID. For instance, the kimono of my character includes the belt as well, but not the pants. The reason being is if the pants were in the same material ID, I would have had to make the UV shell smaller, thus losing resolution for when texturing. So, simply use your logic in order to create your material IDs, but I highly suggest going for a maximum of 5 material ID in total. More than that becomes too much. Next step is to verify that your UVs are well placed within the tile. If I go in my hyper shade again and select one of the material I have created with right mouse button and select object with material, that will select all of the meshes that have that particular material assigned. Alright, now going into the UV editor, which you could find going on UV, UV editor, right click and then select UV shell. Then with your mouse, drag and select all of the shells that are present. The next and final step we're going to take is click on the little checkboard, which is up in the UV editor, and that will make appear a little checkboard all over the tile. If nothing is outside, then it's not going to have a second checkboard appear. 
if you do see something like this appear, then simply select the shell that is outside of the boundaries and bring it back into the first UV shell. So you can just now repeat the same process over and over again with all of your other materials to check if nothing is outside of the boundaries. Okay, one final step that we can take is verify that there are no errors in our geometry. So with our mouse, we're just going click and drag the entire mesh and then go into mesh and clean up. So we're going to have the clean up option appear with a bunch of options. First, you can choose between clean up matching polygons or select matching polygons. I choose select matching polygons because I just want the cleanup window to show me my errors without fixing them. In fact, the other options will try to fix the problem you may have, but could also end up destroying your geometry. Next, I select faces with more than four sides. So that if any of the faces have more than four sides, like the name says, it will highlight it. And finally, lamina and non-manifold for any error in the geometry. When I click on apply, nothing is highlighted. That means I have no errors. Just to show you what it would do if I did have an error, let me delete one edge to my asset. So now, as you can see, I have more than four sides, about six edges, which is not good. When I click on my cleanup tool, yup, it is highlighted. So just to fix that problem, I'm going to undo to have my faces back with only four edges. Once your geometry has been fixed, your UV verified, you can export your low resolution character by selecting all of it, going to file, export selection, and choose a destination. Okay, so now we're back into ZBrush. The thing we want to do is export our high resolution mesh so that we can bake our low resolution character. Um, I could export it everything as it is, but chances are it's going to take a lot of time to bake unnecessarily. So what we can do is decimate our character. So I'm going to select the leather part and what I'm basically going to do is <clears throat> reduce the amount of geometry that is present. You can even see in the active points, there's about 3 million of them. So what we want to do is basically go into our Z plugin and go to our decimate tab. In the decimate master, we're going to have to click into pre-process current. What that's going to do is basically calculate the amount of geometry needed to have as much detail as possible and the less amount of geometry. When the calculation is done, we can click on decimate current. And now if we click on our wireframe, as you can see, the amount of points is much less. If we check on our active points, you can see as well that instead of having 3 millions of them, we have 700,000, which is a lot better than it used to be. Okay, now, like we did with the low resolution character, what we wanna do is change the naming convention. So with the low resolution character, we had the name mesh and then underscore low. The only thing we want to change with the high resolution character is change low to high. So if you wrote head underscore low, don't write head to underscore high, just head underscore high. To make sure you copy exactly the same name with the high mesh, you can go in Maya and double click on the name copy it with control C and then go back in ZBrush, click on rename the subtool and then pass it and simply change low to high. The reason why this is super important is that when in Substance Painter, we're going to select a certain option, which is going to bake only meshes of the same name. Now, if one of your low resolution object has to be baked to multiple subtool, here is the way to go about it. As you can see here, my boot is composed of multiple subtools. 
So I should merge them together, but first I'm going to assign a vertex color to each one of them. This is going to come handy in Substance Painter. So select a color, then click on Fill Object. I have it as a shortcut on the side, but you can find it going on the Color tab, then click on Fill Object again. You can repeat the same thing over and over for every object and try to give a different hue for each one of them so that the ID works best. Only when that is done, you can go to Subtool tab and click on Merge Down to make one single subtool. Verify that the naming convention is still correct after having merged everything and if it still is, you are ready to export. Simply go to Z plugin, then click on FBX Export. We are now in Substance Painter, about to create a new project for texturing and baking our character. Let's begin by going on File, then click on New. When you do, a new file will appear with a bunch of options. The first thing to do is load up our low resolution mesh, so let's click on Select and find the FBX in questions. Next, let's set up the resolution of our texture in the viewport. I choose 2K for now, but don't worry, that can be changed at any time while texturing. I also have my normal set to OpenGL, which is basically how the normal map is baked. More precisely, the green channel. When all of the options have been selected, you can click on OK. Alright, as you can see, I have my low resolution loaded and I am ready to bake some details on him. So, in the texture settings, let's click on Bake Mesh Maps and instantly a window will appear. First thing first, let's tell the baker that we want our maps in 4K. Then, by click on, clicking on the little sheet next to the empty dark square, let's select every single one of our exported high resolution mesh. At this point, we are almost done, ladies and gents. Just under that, you can see a max frontal distance and max rear distance. To put it simply, this is basically going to tell the baker how far we want it to search for geometry to bake. For instance, if I was to do a little doodle, let's say I bring my slider up to my max frontal distance, the cage of our bake is going to search further for geometry. But I, if I keep it low, you might have dark areas, artifacts on your bake. So I like to start low and then depending on the result I might have, go back to it a second round. Now let's go to the ID and change our options to vertex color. Because as you may remember, we assign different colors to our subtools. Finally, our ambient occlusion. Let's change the self occlusion to only same name mesh so that we don't have dark shadows coming from other meshes on our character. And then, last but not least, I like to have two out of two for simples when baking to have as much details as possible. Note that this will make your baking process longer. Then, the whole reason the naming convention was so important in the first place is here. We want our mesh to be baked only to the same name mesh. So let's change that right here. And again, make sure the suffix is the same as in Maya. So in my case, I had my low and high with a majuscule at the beginning. So I'm just going to change that in substance. When that's done, I can finally click on Bake. With everything baked, you are finally ready to texture. Now, let me show you quickly the use of having the color ID on some meshes. Let's go back to our shoe and pretend I want to have only the tip of them in red. Well, I can just put a new color layer, then I go in Mask select add mask with color selection click on the color selector choose the id and boom you have red only on the tip of the shoe 
One other trick you might want to use when baking is send a slightly more subdivided mesh to substance. For instance, in my scene in Maya, I have a group with a very low resolution character and one with some assets smoothed, like for instance the pants. The UVs are the same, since it's my low resolution but subdivided, and it helps my baker because it doesn't deal with hard edges. I highly suggest using that technique for belts and things that are cylinder-like. What might end up happening no matter how hard you try is having those black spots on your mesh. So one way to fix that is to paint over it. First thing to do is in the texture settings, go down until we see normal mixing and ambient occlusion mixing to change them to replace instead of combine or multiply. Then let's create a layer and in this layer, remove every map except normal and ambient occlusion. If you cannot see ambient occlusion, just go up in your options again and activate it by clicking on the plus sign. Then let's go in our shelves and search for the texture that were baked, in my case, for my shoe. What I want to do is put those in the slots of the layer. And then, once the texture have been set, create a new layer and deactivate every map slot except the one you want to fix, so in my case it's ambient occlusion. Then I can go ahead and create a mask for this layer and then finally paint over where I want to fix in white. So now I can't see what's going on because I did not change the mixing. So after changing the layer view to ambient occlusion, I'm changing the specific layers mixing to normal. And now, as you can see, I can draw on the black spots and make them disappear. The same can be done with the normal or anything you would have baked. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions on what my next video should be about. Because just saying, this video was inspired by one of you. So your idea might be my next video. Who knows? Other than that, you can follow me on my social media, Twitch, Artstation, Instagram. They'll be linked down below. This way you can be up to date with my artwork. So that's it for for today's video guys i'll be seeing you in the next one i hope you'll be there be creative